using the refractometer to measure the specific density and the freeze point of a propylene glycol system. We've gone to all the trouble to resurrect, install, and get going a solar thermal system. You've got all of the system up and running, and now it's time to install the heat transfer fluid into your system. Before you add that fluid to your system, it's best to make sure that you have a proper mix of glycol to water in the system. I will do a video later specifically on glycol and all the properties that are associated with it. There are a couple rules of thumb. The first rule of thumb is in typical systems we're going to see temperatures that fluctuate between somewhere near 30 to 200 degrees resulting in an expansion of about 6%, roughly 6% if we had a 50% glycol mix. Generally speaking we want to try to, and there's different rules for all this so as you watch this video there's going to be some people that are going to say well this is a better process and this is a better uh, percentage percentage to go. What I would recommend here is the following. So you've gone to all the trouble of, of installing the system. Let's look at the specific density. What I generally do as a rule of thumb, and I'm going to come back to this in a second, is I'm going to take a sample. I mixed my solution and this is a video that I cut after I've done all the install. So that's why I had some extra heat transfer fluid glycol mix with the water already stored in my bucket here. So I only had maybe a half gallon left. So I took that sample, I added it to the refractometer, put it on the slide, followed the rules that we did from a previous lesson ago, and this is the result that I got. And I'm going to bring this up. This is the specific gravity for a temperature of freeze point. So the freeze point is right around zero degrees, according to the refractometer. I'm pretty happy with that. And there's a few cases here to make the argument about A, what is the ambient air temperature, what is the absolute coldest temperature that this solar thermal system could see in the winter, and that sort of thing. Thing. And then the actual glycol manufacturer will have a recommended percentage of mix, typically like a 50-50 mix, 50% 50 water, 50% glycol for the colder climates here in Illinois and, and Wisconsin. I like to do the 50-50, but there's a wide variety of reasons and rationales to go one way or the other. The refractometer is merely telling me that I have a 0 degree to 2 degree freeze point at which it'll freeze. That is not the complete picture. What I need to do is go to the manufacturer and to the sticker that is associated with this this manufacturer of polypropylene glycol has this. So if you're using a refractometer, which we did, there's a compensation adjustment. The refractometer showed me just about at zero. So the freeze protection is down to minus six degrees. It's pumpable down to minus 50 and the burst is at minus 60. I went with this. I probably could have diluted it just a touch to get a refractometer and added a little bit more water. I feel that if there's an extremely cold spell and I leave this out, I will be safe down to minus 60 degrees. But the real key is I can pump down to minus 15 degrees. It comes at a trade-off. And the trade-off is, the interesting thing about glycol is that it is more viscous than water. And it tends to weep and pour out of places than other locations. So you may have a tight seal and all of a sudden you're seeing little bits of this red glycol slowly getting through. And that has everything to do with its being, it's more viscous. And so because it's more viscous, it's a little bit harder on the pump. I only show you this last picture with the reflect in the whole bit was because when I did this install is a system I have in my home it's a 1978 solar thermal system on the bottom here I had a fitting loose and all my glycol poured out onto the ground it was quite a mess I had to clean it all up get rid of all the dirt and it was a big old mess but the point is it tends to be more viscous and it caused problems just to refresh you take your reading you take a clean sample of what you've got you put it in your refractometer you look to see what that percentage is then you go to the main manufacturer read site and you read what the correction value is and every product will be slightly different and we need to know what those slightly different values are but that in a nutshell is how we actually read the freeze rate of a glycol system